This is another interesting edition of the Market Review where we bring you key developments in the financial and capital markets as it affects the economy. Today we'll be discussing corporate governance and stability in the Nigerian financial markets. We meet to have this interesting conversation is Mr. Teslim Shitabe, the Managing Editor and Chief Economist of ProShare. Nice to have you once again. It's a pleasure being on your program again, Otto. Looking forward to a very interesting conversation around this topical uh, issue, which of course is of significant importance to the financial and capital market. Before we begin this conversation, let's give you a recap of market stories from last week. The Nigeria Exchange Group confirmed its intention to list on the main board of Nigeria Exchange Limited. The proposed listing follows the successful completion of the mutualization and restructuring of the former Nigerian Stock Exchange and its related operations within the new NGX Group. Shares of NGX Group are expected to commence trading on NGX following the listing by introduction. All regulatory requirements have been fulfilled and the listing has received approval of the NGX Regulation Limited. A total of 1,964,115,918 shares are expected to be admitted to trading and the shares will be trading under the ticker NGX Group. Also last week, ProShare September 2021, the Nigeria Capital Market Service report revealed that the Nigeria Exchange Limited market capitalization hit 39.6 trillion naira to lead the whole ecosystem, followed by FMDQ debt market size, which was 24.6 trillion naira. The NASD PLC from the unlisted OTC securities followed, achieving a market size of 37 billion naira. We go on a break, and when we return, we'll continue this conversation. Tune in to Web TV Daily to stay up to date and informed on the financial market, personal finance, and more. We have got you covered with all your favorite TV shows, economy and politics, market review, women's series, millennial talk, Islamic Finance Weekly, The Brief, exclusive interviews, events, and we keep you up to date on all the updates in the financial market with the market opening gong. Watch premium content. Watch Web TV. Same news, different perspective. Welcome back. If you are joining us, it is the Market Review and we are discussing corporate governance and stability in the Nigerian financial market. My guest today is Mr. Teslim Shitabe, the Chief Economist and Managing Editor of Prosha. First, Mr. Shitabe, I'd like to say that the uh, last report that was written, published by the ProShare Research on the CBN uh, board removal of First Bank and of course, 100 days after is quite remarkable, the readership and the discussion is generated across the country is quite, quite very insightful. I just want to ask you how significant from this report and what um, was unveiled is corporate governance to the financial market stability. If you want to date back to 2007, 2008 crisis, it's okay too. Okay, um, thank you very much, Walter. Um, I think at the heart of economic stability is governance. Now, it's governance at the public sector level as well as the private sector level. And of course, um, we consider in Prussia the financial services sector as a leading sector in the economy. And so it also needs to lead in governance. And we have decided, therefore, that over the next few months, we shall be analyzing different financial institutions and assessing the quality of their governance. Because ultimately, it comes to the fact that we're not going to leave this world alive. In the words of Les Brown, we're all going to leave this world dead. But Brown says something, and it's very important. We should live full and die empty. So there must be a framework by which corporate governance is fully explored across sectors but most especially the financial services sector because of its multiplier impact on other sectors of the economy, right? So we delved into um, FBNH, uh, First Bank of Nigeria, um, and we did discover some anomalies. We must admit that they had done some things right. However, for the CBN to decide to intervene, there are obvious infractions that were identified. Um, and the infractions were of different levels of significance. Um, those who want to see the details of that will have to read the reports. But what is important for us is that the financial service system requires greater scrutiny. 
and not by regulators alone. We're all in this thing together. So the institutions like uh, ProShare that are research and evidence-based need to take an overview of these institutions and assess whether they are being governed in a manner that protects everybody. The small scale businessman, the medium sized businessman, the high net worth individual, and society as a whole. We need our financial systems to be stable. We need them to be robust. We need them to be far sighted. Now, let me tell you one of the reasons why far sightedness is particularly important in this period. The world is going through a period of what we in Prussia call extreme VUCA. Now, what does extreme VUCA mean? It means that we are in a period where we have extreme volatility, we're having extreme uncertainty, we're having extreme complexities. And that's why you are seeing disruptions in global supply chains, right? And then there's ambiguity. Now, so VUCA is volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. Those four things are dominant in the way the world is moving. And we're seeing a lot of disruptions, especially in the financial services sector. We're talking about decentralized finance now, right? And financial um, tech companies are disrupting the whole space. But are they properly governed? That governance. Uh, that, we come back to the issue of governance. They're innovative. They're agile. But do they subscribe to principles of best practice governance? And for us, that's going to be a critical issue going forward. Because like you rightly pointed out, part of the problems we saw in 2007, 2008, leading to the global meltdown, was poor governance. So that's how we, we intend to go for the next few months. Yes. Definitely. And, and, and I mean, I must commend that, that view because it again brings to the fore the importance of how governance, not just even uh, if you look into what has happened with the vanguard in China, the issue of defaults and all that, again, the issue of governance, like you said, the meltdown came through that issue of governance. And again, if we don't address that, even at the global level, we, we, we face that risk. But let's also look at the fact that uh, the shareholders, shareholder engagement is very important. And um, you also engage various institutions that have that primary role of driving governance. Um, how would you expect to see more of board engagement with shareholders in strengthening the institutional integrity in financial institutions because that's very important when the integrity is eroded it becomes a serious concern also you've hit the heart of a very serious um, challenge uh, nigeria has increasingly seen in terms of the boardroom yeah. um, the shareholder power has been weakened shareholders activism is no longer as potent as it was in the 80s and perhaps 90s, where we had shareholders, you know, who were very savvy, they, they understood the books, and they would take on boards. So the board was kept in check from extreme bad behavior because they knew that there was this other layer of oversight called the shareholders who would put them to task over certain policy actions and decisions they've made. Increasingly, in the, from maybe, let's say, the early 2000s, we've seen shareholders hold meetings and yes they engage but the rigor the sophistication that we were used to in the 80s has suddenly dissipated disappeared it's gone down a rabbit hole and that is what we need to restore has we, to be we have to be revived we need to see shareholders understanding the issues challenging the board to better conduct we need to see shareholders who are committed to ensuring that the board provides the best possible returns on their investment. So you don't have this King Kong board that just stamps over everybody and tells everybody to go sit down somewhere while they have a frolic. No. We've got to see strong shareholder. The strong shareholder is not an individual, but it's a group of, a collective of shareholders who understand the numbers. So shareholder education is also a critical issue. From our, from our investigations, we've got to have a more sophisticated shareholder body that educates its members on key financial indices to note. So they that, can raise those issues. So they can raise the issues. issues. And that's the hard part. You know, that's, the, that's the hard aspects of it. But there are also soft aspects of it. Your board, what character does it bring to the table? What type of personalities are on the board? So that if a person is nominated to the board, and the shareholders don't agree with his style because of antecedents, then they say no. 
that this person is not a fit and proper person to be on the board. You know, we have not seen that happen. And um, because of that weakness, uh, corporate institutions across the board, whether financial services or non-financial services, have shown a tendency to be a bit autocratic. So we need to move that shareholder engagement and that strategy. And at the, just the recent uh, Society for Corporate Governance uh, 2021 annual conference we looked at emerging trends in corporate governance. Uh, the keynote speaker was saying that even with the changes, you know, with the pandemic and the fact mm. that we're having more virtual um, mm. agents, hybrid, mm. that there should be a, a level where shareholders can still engage uh, and they're admitted to engage and really hold the board to account. A brilliant point you've made also because, you know, we, we, we talked about VUCA mm -hmm. a few minutes ago. Mm -hmm. And so the reality is that the world is going to change and you can't hold it back from changing. It will change. But how agile is the voice of the shareholder? How in tune is the shareholder with the realities of a changing environment? So one of the things we've talked about is, yes, digital conferencing, right? So the shareholders still engage on a digital platform, but they can also do it by having small shareholder reports. The company has its AGM, beautiful. The shareholder does analysis and talks about areas of development, engages with it, and insists that they want to have a conversation outside the AGM. Because the AGM is just once a year, right? Yeah. So if anything was going to go wrong, I'm going to wait for another year if I can correct it. So we can't wait that long. So the thing about it is that there should be channels for con continuous engagement between the board and the shareholders of the company, right? And the shareholders of the company have to simply ramp it up in terms of capacity, in terms of far-sightedness, yeah. they've got to be able to see the world as it's changing and bring in position papers and tell the board that, look, you know what? This is the world we see. Alternative scenarios, yeah. right? These are the, in fact, um, I think it's uh, Facebook that calls it the metaverse, <laughs> right? We, we're seeing the metaverse, yeah. virtual reality, okay? Enhanced reality. We're seeing all kinds of things emerge. So, all this should be explored. so they must be explored. And then the shareholders can say, okay, fine. Based on our analysis, this is what we think the company should be doing. This is how we think it can do it. And these are the numbers we are running. And then the board can say, okay, let's look at your paper. Let's have a conversation. Right? So, I think in several years of covering agents, you're right. There are some Nigerian shareholders that have always been vocal, speaking out and engaging. But like you rightly said, we need to see more of them, strong voice in any decision that's going to be taken because shareholder interest is very important. Now, Let's look at the importance of institutional integrity for the financial market for like Nigeria. You, you analyze very well and, and also write on, on the developments in the economy and financial market. Nigeria needs to do well when it has to do with investments. We're not doing so well. And integrity of institutions is very key in attracting those investments. How critical is that for our country? Um, integrity is, let me give you an example. Now, Warren Buffett says, look, when I'm investing in a company, I want to see a very bright chap running that company. I want to see a, a guy who has the skills, but has a commitment. And the third thing I want to see is that beyond his skills and commitment, right, he has integrity. Now, Warren Buffett says something that's very critical. He says, if integrity, if the person doesn't have integrity and has the other two, it doesn't matter. So you could have brilliance, you could have commitment to your, to your goals, but you don't have integrity, then the other two don't matter. So, so, so if you don't have integrity, the other two don't simply matter. So integrity is very important, very important. And it's this lack of integrity that we see that creates problems for institutions in terms of their growth plans. Um, there's a book called The Living Company by Aria Degui. And Aria Degui was a strategist over 30 years in Shell um, Petroleum Development Company. And he looked at why companies actually are 300 years old, 400 years old. What is it that these companies do? Yeah. Spanning centuries. Spanning centuries. What is that critical factor that enables them to have longevity? One of the key things is integrity. He identified integrity as one of the key things. You've got to have integrity. Now, integrity comes in all kinds of uh, complexions, right? We're looking at integrity in terms of the integrity of your business process. How well is your business process designed to ensure that there is minimal error, minimal um, opportunities for fraud? Yeah. 
and minimal disruptions. Once there's a disruption, it quickly activates certain protocols that corrects the disruption and stabilizes the system. So that's systemic integrity. But there's the integrity of the person. Because there must be an alignment between the integrity of the system and the integrity of the persons that run that system. What is the personal value of the individuals? What is their long play? What's the long-term goal of any individual who's perhaps the chairman of a board or the managing director of an institution? What's his long-term play? Now, if his long-term play is, in, is misaligned from his ultimate employer, who is the ultimate employer? The shareholder. Then there's a problem. Because if, for instance, for me, look, it's all about how much moolah comes into my pocket. Hey, I don't care a hoot about what happens to the shareholder. What's important for me is that this system must continue to give me milk. We've got to get to a point where individuals rise above the self. The self is important. I mean, I'm not saying that you are not important, but the so goals, so. yes, the, the organization is beyond you. And that's why also it's critical that transition processes must be structured, must be intelligent. Mm. And, and that's the key for sustainability. That's the key for sustainability. It's a transition process. And that's one of the things that was about to be violated when you look at the issues of uh, CBN and FBNH and other things. That transition, nobody says the transition shouldn't happen. Yeah. But how should it happen and why should it happen? There must be clear criteria for making that transition and making it in such a way that it, does, it is not disruptive of integrity. That is the system's primary goal of ensuring everybody has trust and faith in it. Because even in your currency, yeah. integrity is important. Because you're looking at the good faith of governments. That's why you take the Naira. Yeah. It's the integrity of the government to pay on demand. Yeah. It's some specific. If there's no integrity, if I don't believe in the government, and I think that the government is not going to pay me, I, I will reject your Naira, right? And then I'll flip over to another currency in which I believe that that government will uphold the tenets of integrity. It will back that currency. So integrity is crucial to the whole modern society that we live in. Yeah, and, and it's interesting when you look at regulations, like you always say, we need to reimagine regulations, we need to rethink it in a way that's enabling but also strengthens that institution, whether it's financial capital market, which is very key to economy. When you look at the rules of the Security and Exchange Commission, the apex regulator and the Central Bank of Nigeria, what are one or two things you'd like to see happen more, as is very important to strengthen corporate governance? Um, some of the problems with regulators globally, not just in Nigeria, is that they are reactive. One of the things in Prochia, um, especially our, our unit, one of the things we'd like to see is proactivity. So what happens is that you imagine what is about to occur. You don't wait for it to occur. You imagine that, look, you know what? Given what we're seeing, these are the scenarios we're playing in our minds. And these scenarios, our response to them should be this, if this happens, that, if this happens. So those scenarios are very important. You have to have a metaverse mentality where I'm thinking outside the box. I'm not locked into the past and how it has impacted the present, but I'm looking at how the present is going to impact the future. So I'm living in the future, even though my, I'm physically in the present. It might sound a bit esoteric, right? But the truth of the matter is that you have to prepare for tomorrow. Otherwise, tomorrow will happen, slam you in the face, and you start fiddling around thinking of, oh, how do I handle this? And by the time you take an action, it is not well thought out. It has its own consequences and leads to what economists call the cobra effect, unintended consequences of actions which you have not clearly thought out. So I would like to see SEC, I would like to see CBN think more proactively. Have, for instance, we're looking at um, digital currencies currently. The CBN has done well, you know, but it seems to be more of a knee-jerk reaction to a reality that has already occurred, mm. okay? Now we're responding and we're saying, okay, you know, and it's not only CBN, it's also other central banks central globally. Banks. I mean, we're seeing that in China. China, China is cracking down on yes, We're seeing that, it in yeah. US. And, mm. So governments, um, regulatory institutions across the globe need to be more proactive. These things didn't suddenly just come up and hit us in the face. 
right? The decentralization of finance has been a process that we've seen evolving. I mean, right from the time you saw something like in Pensa, Safaricom in East Africa, Kenya, we saw that disruption take place there. Already in Nigeria, we started going, um, doing some fantastic things in agency banking. And let's just continue to conceive of what this implies for regulation, right? Another, let's take what happened to Chaka. The millennials decided that, look, you know what? We want to trade outside Nigeria, which was a sensible thing to do because you're saying that, like, let me diversify my portfolio. Let me, let me, let me de-risk it by not making my investments concentrated in one particular country. So Nigerian youth decided to be citizens of the world. And they said that, look, to be citizens of the world, we need to be invested in the world. So let's go out there and see what different other companies exist that are likely to lead the future. So they invested. And then you had a platform like Chaka. But the regulators didn't quite understand what Chaka was and what, it was, what the implications were, and just simply shut it down. So for us, what we would have wanted to see is that the CBN and SEC have sandboxes. Now, in these sandboxes, guys can play. They play around with different concepts, different ideas, and suggest what they want to do with it. And the regulators look at these things and say, oh, OK, you know what? Yeah, this is quite good. But we have concerns here. So how would you address it? And so the regulator and the innovator are working in tandem to refine the system to ensure that all problems, maybe like confidentiality, that we know, security, you know, all those things are addressed. So, like I said before, I want to see sandboxes. Regulators have sandboxes where there is an interface between them and innovators. Yes, the operators could be the innovators. The funny thing is that innovation could come from outside the industry entirely. Who told you that a, a, a big uh, retail player can't provide uh, certain services, you know? And those services would have traditionally been seen as financial service activities. But they have the market, they have the presence. And so if they have that, why can't they do some of the services? Why can't I have an in-store bank? <laughs> so you come, you want to, and I know you, I have your history. I know how you buy things on a monthly basis. So I, I can take a risk on you. I say, oh, I know Otto. He's, he buys this amount every month. And therefore, I can extend him credit up to this amount. So you're going to find credit facilities taking place in store. I mean, there are all kinds of disruptions that could be discussed. Very interesting insights from you, Mr. Taslim Shitabe. And of course, I'm not surprised because we always get this every time we have this conversation. Thank you once again, Mr. Taslim Shitabe, my Thank GD2 and Chief Economist Pro Chef, for this very interesting conversation. It's very clear that regulators need to be proactive. I am aware that there are sandboxes from SEC and CBM, but we need to see them strengthened and integrate every uh, member of the ecosystem. And that will be all for this edition of the Market Review. Our conversation was on how to strengthen corporate governance in the financial markets in Nigeria. If you have questions, comments, or suggestions around this topic, you can send them to otobasi.abasekong at preoshareng.com. We'll be glad to respond to you. Also join our website, www.preoshareng.com, to read our stories, articles, and analysis around corporate governance as it affects the financial and capital market. Full our social media platforms displayed on the screen. Till we come your way again, thank you for watching, and have a nice day.